Last time I revealed Jensen's master plan for why the RTX 4000 prices are going up so high in one generation. This time we'll take a look to see if the competition from AMD and Intel can bring prices back to normal, or will Jensen's master plan just be adopted by the competition? Let's get into it. Jensen's master plan to increase the average selling price or ASP is off to a rough start with the RTX 4080 GPUs with the greater launch of 2022. I have made a series of videos challenging Jensen's assertions for the large price increases and have shown that it's not just due to inflation, it's not due to Moore's law, and it's not due to TSMC's wafers costing, as Jensen puts it, a ton more. I'll put a link to the playlist in the upper right hand corner. And Jensen's masterful use of price anchoring in last generation's 3090 and 3090 Ti has mainstream tech media now talking about how great of a deal the 4090 is this generation. And there is nothing better for professionals. But I do not agree that it is a great deal for gamers since the comparison was established by the exorbitantly high anchor price point in the 3090. I do not deny the performance increase of the 4090. After all, it has more shaders than we have ever seen in a desktop GPU. Its generational performance increase is like a 1080 Ti moment. But I do challenge the price where you pay for all of that performance increase. We didn't do that with the 1080 Ti. Think about this. What if every generation Jensen made you pay for the performance increase? What if that started four generations ago with the 1080 Ti? Well, according to Tech Power Up, the 4090 is three times more powerful. So, according to Jensen, you should pay three times more money than the 1080 Ti's $700 MSRP or $2100. Oh, I guess he's already been working on it since we know he tried earlier this year with the 3090 Ti at $1999. Maybe he'll try again with the 4090 Ti. But if you go back to the previous four generations that started with the GTX 480 and up to the 980 Ti, you also saw a three times improvement in performance, but the price increase only went up 30%. So Jensen is now aggressively pricing so that you have to pay for every improvement in performance. No more free generational performance upgrades for you. Now the 4090 is sold out and stock may be limited going forward. A recent rumor suggests that they are shifting production away from the RTX 4090 so that they can maximize sales of Hopper H100 AI GPUs to China before the US restrictions are in place. They make a lot more money on Hopper sales than ADA sales. When the 4080 launches on November 16th, based on the data Nvidia provided, I calculated an 18% performance increase over a 3090 Ti, and it will provide a 40-50% to performance increase over a 3080 but it will cost 71% more. That's an additional $500. And now there are multiple reports that the new 12-pin power connectors in the 4090 are melting. So Nvidia is not in a very strong position this generation. They won't have stock available for the most talked about GPU in the 4090, and the 4080 is likely to get slaughtered in the reviews for being a horrible value by providing up to a 50% increase in performance while costing 71% more. So is there any competition to NVIDIA that can bring these prices back down? Let's start with Intel. Intel launched ARC the same day as the RTX 4090. The ARC sold out very quickly. I looked into purchasing the A770 with 16 gigabytes from Newegg and I never had a chance. It went directly to sold out. Checking eBay two weeks after launch and you have four sold in total in the US and three available for sale. A grand total of seven. So technically, it's not a paper launch. It seems the launch of the Intel Arc was a very, very limited in supply, and only a handful of GPUs were ever made for sale to the public. Intel Arc hardware does show that it is capable of competing with a 3060 Ti or 6700 XT. However, the drivers are just so bad. People have been talking about bad drivers all year. These drivers will never be fixed. They are playing whack-a-mole trying to patch these drivers. Patching what they have will never get them to where they need to be for providing you or I with a great experience. Why did this happen? Intel was to launch the ARC in quarter one of 2022. Then it was delayed to quarter two, then summer. Well, Intel management being so inexperienced with GPUs, they totally underestimated what was needed from a software driver perspective. Intel made the fatal flaw by building their existing drivers upon their integrated GPU drivers. That's like building a three-story mansion on the foundation you use for a shed. 
They will have to completely rewrite major portions of the drivers and that will likely take them one to two years to get that right. I don't have any hope for Intel as a competitive threat to Nvidia on the desktop until 2024. Based on the availability or lack thereof, and the first impression Intel Arc has left on the world at this point, I'm not so sure we'll be talking about Arc on the desktop in 2024. So let's move on to AMD where we have the announcement on November 3rd for their RX 7000 GPUs. The rumors say that Navi 31 will launch first, followed by Navi 32 and 33 in 2023. So let's focus on Navi 31, which is rumored to be launching in December. Based on the rumored detailed specs from Angstronomics, there will be two variants, one with 48 workgroup processors and another with 42. The 48 workgroup processor version will have a 384-bit bus with 24 gigabytes of VRAM, and the 42 workgroup processor version will have a 320-bit bus with 20 gigabytes of VRAM. Now, we have two recent rumors from two known leakers. One leaker says that the performance will be two times faster raster and over two times better ray tracing performance. The other leaker says that RDNA 3 will find it difficult to compete with Nvidia's RTX 40 GPU in both rasterization and ray tracing performance. So what are we to make of these two leaks? In ray tracing, even if AMD doubles the performance, they will still not be as good as the 4090. They will close the gap, so it will be more competitive, but Nvidia did have a one generation head start, so I think this is to be expected. In rasterization, the leaker says it will be two times faster. The 6900 XT currently scores in the low to mid 9000s in Time Spy Extreme, so if Navi 31 scores two times that amount, that would place it around 19,000 and just 2% behind the 4090. And if they can overclock it to 3.5 GHz or more, then maybe they can take the GPU crown, even if just barely. But that small amount would not matter. A small win will not be enough to change someone's buying decision to go from Nvidia to AMD. AMD needs a big win. What is significant is that AMD will have a GPU that can also enable a 4K high refresh rate gaming experience at the highest quality detailed settings. And it is likely that it will also offer better performance at 1080p and 1440p, just like the 6900 XT offered better performance at lower resolutions but lost at 4K. So it could be the most well-rounded high-end GPU. If they want to start to change people's opinions about AMD Radeon in one generation, they will have to win by 30% or more, and that is not happening against the 4090. But they will have two advantages over Nvidia. One, they will have the advantage of availability. Navi 31 will not have as many professionals seeking this GPU, as AMD is not as entrenched in the professional software market as Nvidia is with all of their CUDA cores. This will make it more available for gamers. And two, it's cheaper to manufacture using the MCM design so they could significantly undercut Nvidia on pricing. So how will AMD price the two GPUs? Well, they're at a fork in the road. They have one of two paths they can take. The one path continues to use the same strategy I have talked about several times before. It is their slot in pricing strategy. They let Nvidia set the pricing structure and then they just slot in their GPUs based on that performance. If they choose this strategy, then they will likely price the 48 workgroup processor version to within $100 of the 4090 at $1499. Of course, that assumes the performance rumor is true. And the 42 workgroup processor version with 20 gigabytes of VRAM would likely be priced along the 4080 at $1199. With that version having 12% fewer shaders, you could expect it to beat the 4080 by 15 to 20%. But I will be extremely disappointed if they take this path. The other path in the fork in the road is to price it aggressively against Nvidia. I'll call that the it's go time strategy. Time for AMD to compete and fight for market share and more importantly to fight for mind share. They could offer the 48 workgroup processor version for only $100 more than they were selling the 6950 XT and pit it directly against the 4080 at $1199. And that GPU would crush the 4080 as it would be at least 35% faster. It would be a tier higher level of performance for the same price as a 4080. AMD could say you get 4090 like performance for 4080 money. Then they could offer the 42 workgroup processor version with 20 gigabytes of VRAM for 999. And they could claim that they offer the world's first 4K high refresh rate GPU for under $1,000. And even if Jensen is forced to counter AMD's pricing, he would not lower the price of the 4090 since professionals will continue to buy that GPU. 
He could lower the price of the 4080 to match the 42 workgroup processor version at $999. However, AMD would still be 15 to 20% more powerful for the same price and offer you four additional gigabytes of VRAM. That would be the aggressive it's go time strategy to take on Nvidia. With that strategy, AMD would definitely start to gain mindshare. Gaining mindshare is not a one-time event. It takes several generations, just like it did with Ryzen. By the way, if you like analysis like this, like, share, and consider subscribing, as that really helps to support the channel. And let me know in the comments below if you think AMD will use the safe slot-in pricing strategy or the aggressive it's go time strategy. What path will AMD take? Part of me thinks that they will continue on the safe path and use the slot-in strategy. But something is very different this time. Jensen has painted himself into a corner of sorts. On one side, he has the high RTX 3000 inventory that he still needs to clear. And on the other side, he's committed to his investors to double the ASP for his GPUs from pre-pandemic levels. AMD is showing some level of willingness for price cuts when they made this post back in September that showed the reduced prices of Radeon GPUs up and down the lineup. But unless AMD can crush Nvidia, they are not going to gain mindshare anytime soon. Even if Jensen did lower prices eventually on the 4080, everyone would love AMD for forcing Nvidia to drop prices. AMD would get all the accolades for having the first GPU under $1000 that enables 4K high refresh rate gaming. With all that praise, AMD would begin to gain mindshare. As that happens, more people will give AMD a chance since they would feel good about buying from a company that does good things and not evil things. Now, as a bonus, AMD will support DisplayPort 2.1, unlike the 4090, and AMD will not have the new melting 12-pin power connectors and will stick with the traditional 8-pin power connectors. NVIDIA is not in a good position right now. From their last quarterly earnings call, they were asked about the $1.22 billion inventory charge, and NVIDIA provided as vague an answer as they could, saying that they have written down some silicon and chips, for some of the prior architecture pieces, given the change in expectations going forward. My translation is that they purchased a warehouse full of Ampere die and matching GDDR6X memory, and the miners stopped buying up all the GPUs. Now that they have all this huge inventory, they will have to get creative to find ways to dump all of that stock. And we are seeing evidence of that. NVIDIA is refreshing the 3060 Ti, an old GPU that came out way back in December of 2020 that will get rid of some of the GDDR6X memory. And we just saw the 3070 Ti be updated from a 104 medium sized die to a heavily cut down 102 large die. How does that make any business sense unless you've already purchased a large die and need to dump it however you can to minimize the losses? And NVIDIA will also refresh the old 3060, which came out in February of 2021, but they will now be cutting the bandwidth by 33% and reducing the VRAM from 12 gigabytes down to 8 gigabytes, likely in an attempt to compete with the sub-$300 RX 6600 GPUs. NVIDIA is really struggling with the excess inventory, updating old GPUs way late in the generation, managing the coexistence of two generations of hardware, having availability issues with the 4090 and now melting power connector issues? NVIDIA is in a very, very vulnerable position and I have not seen the stars align more than now for AMD to challenge them. This could be the once in a lifetime opportunity for Radeon to break free from being considered by the general public as a tier two GPU brand. This really is a pivotal moment for AMD Radeon, GPU pricing and PC gaming. Will Lisa adopt a new pricing structure and join Jensen on the dark side? Or will she seize the moment and strike back? We'll all know on November 3rd. And you can be sure that when they release their performance charts, that I'll be counting pixels and running analysis, just like I did two years ago with the launch of Big Navi. And if you missed my previous videos where I challenged Jensen's claims, you can check those out here. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.